First of all, I want to thank you all for coming here today. Before I share with you my story, I want to say that uh, beside me being the head of the community center in Ashkol Regional Council, first of all, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a wife, I'm a friend, I'm a community member. And in the last five months, these balloons that are the symbol of hope and childhood, of celebration, of happiness, became the, the symbol of terror, the symbol of fear. When our children see balloons today, they behave like it's a suspicious object. You might see children see a balloon and run for it, but in our community, children who see balloon run to the opposite side. And this is terror. Terror is all about taking the most Innocent, innocent things and make them into fear. You know, when you wake up your children every day to school, some of you, if you remember when you used to wake your children up to school every day, you have uh, an alarm, usually it's a nice soft music, although whenever I use light soft music, it became become annoying later on. But this is the way we wake up. Our children has another soft sound in their life. It's called Code Red. I want to sing you a short song. It's a song that my children came back from the kindergarten one day with this song. It says, the lyrics are, let's hurry up, hurry up, hurry up to the safe room. Let's hurry up, hurry up, because it's dangerous outside. And because rockets became something of a daily routine for us, we don't have a real siren. We have this code red. I want to let you hear it for a moment. <laughs> Takes a moment. <laughs> I have to share with you that even uh, sitting on one of your amazing lay leaders here in the community yesterday, I, I heard someone with a speaker and immediately we jumped. It takes us to the same place. So a little bit about who I am. I'm sorry. I was born in 1977 in Sinai. Um, my generation, when we were born, the parents looked at us and said, probably by the age of 18, they won't have to go to the army. In 1982, my parents had to leave their homes and rebuild their house because peace was more important than everything else. And we wanted peace with, with Egypt, and we left our house, and we rebuilt our community in, in a wonderful place, right along the border with Gaza, and still close to Egypt, where we used to live. And we have an amazing community. I want to emphasize that we live in a place that is 100% Israel. It's not a place in dispute. It's 1948 borders. And this is home for us. Later on in my life, I, uh, I found a kibbutznik, a nice guy. I made him marry me. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> I became a mother at 2004. My daughter Shira was born. I looked on the people in Gush Katif that used to live right in the Gaza Strip, and I couldn't understand how come these people live under these conditions. Every day a terror attack. Something happens, infiltrations, threats. How can you raise children like this? In 2005, Israel decided about the disengagement, and the people of Gush Katif left their homes and had to rebuild their homes. And I felt for them. I was a young mother. I remembered how my parents had to struggle after they had to leave their homes. But I felt it was the right thing to do. We want peace more than everything else. 
and we shouldn't live in Gush Katif. And as they left their homes, and as they left, you Americans invested millions of dollars in hothouses and greenhouses and great infra infrastructures in Gaza, they were burned within weeks. And I became the people of Gush Katif. I became the front of this conflict. In 2006, my two boys were born. It was three weeks after Gilad Shalit was kidnapped, a week after a good friend lost his son in the Second Lebanon War, and I was with the ho in the hospital with my two boys, Ron and Ofri, looking at them and knowing that they will go to the army, that I don't have the privilege my parents had to hope that they won't be there. But I knew at this point that I'm going to raise the most humane, wonderful human beings. There will be beautiful people that won't hate the other side, but they will be strong enough and tough enough to defend us. And this new reality of 15 seconds that crawled into our life, and it's always 15 seconds, even when I'm in the shower and my kids are playing outside, even when it's my 94 years old grandfather, it's always 15 seconds that we have to run for our lives. And the government build shelters, so we bring paints and we paint the, the shelters with colorful painting because we are positive people. And we teach our children songs in the kindergarten to help them to run into shelter in time. And we invest in community, community programs to make us stronger, to remind us that we are not alone. And we build resilience centers to give us tools for our community to be there next to each other. And we are positive and I feel normal. My life changed when I was lucky enough to be chosen to be the Shlicha in Colorado, the Israeli emissary. And suddenly I was exposed to you guys with your wonderful children with no threats. And just before the Israel Memorial Day, I put my son to bed and he's asking me, Mom, the children in my class won't have to go to the army. That's right. And I'm saying, that's right. And he says, and I will have to go to the army, right? And I say, that's right. But I'm afraid to get hurt. And I couldn't promise him anything else. During Protective Edge, I was still in Colorado. My children were in vacation in Israel. And I was calling the mayor. And I asked him, Chaim, what do you need? The Jewish community abroad is so generous with us. They are so there for us. And he didn't know what to say. After so many years under this constant emergency routine, they didn't have plans set. And when I came to Israel, just after Protective Edge, I knew that Jewish National Fund is the right answer for me. I knew about the great work that you were doing in the Arava, in the South, in the Galilee, and I called Russell Robinson, and he did come. And it was a completely different experience from this point. Yes, since Protective Edge, Almost for 18 years, we are dealing with constant attacks. Since Protective Edge, more than 15 tunnels, constant infiltrations, more than 500 rockets, more than 1,000 fires. How do we go through this? I have to tell you, after I heard the doctor, maybe I'm, we are a miracle. Because we are optimistic. We have wonderful life. When my children wake up in the morning, they wake up with a smile. We focus on the 99% of our life, and our life are 99% heaven and 1% hell. And how do we go through this? We have you with us. We have one another. When the doctor was talking about the trauma, it's true. I see the effect every day. Let me show you what is a resilient center. You may call such a place a therapy center. In Israel, we use the word resilience because we are resilient, we are strong, we don't give up. This wonderful center comes with great costs. It's with your generous support, 
of the Jewish National Fund and donors like you here in this room today that we managed to provide this important service. So I want to thank you. I want to ask you something. Don't feel sorry for us. And don't call us heroes. For us, you are heroes. For us, you are partners. And we could have never go through it alone. Thank you for being with us. You have funded more therapy treatments because sadly, they are needed. And we need them. The JNF Sderot Inder Recreation Center, which is a huge playground and bomb shelter, has been open extra hours recently to facilitate our children, our community. You deliver new firefighters wagons to our community. I have to tell you, even before we were asking for it, it was already on the way. There is a brand new resilience center in Eshkol that you can see the pictures here that really helps us, helps us, our community, to, to continue to thrive. We are building two new, more resilience centers, one of them even with animal treatments. When I see the name of a family in the United States, like the Grossman family, on a bomb shelter that was just painted in colorful painting, we know that you are with us. I'm Israel Chai, and we created a state after the Holocaust. If we manage to do it, we can overcome this, and we will grow out of it. Why? Because we are together. We are beyachad, and together, beyachad, we choose life. I want to thank you for listening to our story today. I hope next time we'll meet, it will be in Israel, and bring your family with you. On behalf of myself, my family, my community, Todaraba, thank you for being with us. Chazak, we are strong.